I mentioned that it was released in 2009 in version 10 to b and so you might wonder, is this 2009 era technology? Did progress ship it and forget about it? No. Um, this is a selected list, not a complete list of changes that were made to TDE over the years. Uh, I'm not going to go through each one, but the, the, what I'm demonstrating here is that progress does continue to invest in this product. It's clearly um, strategically important for the company, and I'd say more so now than ever. Um, I will call out one thing, which I think is even more important than all the features that they've added, is the features that they've taken away. Um, in 12.0, um, Progress removed the RC4 cipher because it's no longer secure, as well as uh, the DES cipher for binary dumps. So what that tells me is that they're continuing to evaluate um, the, the real security value that the product provides, and you know that's just essential for any such product. Um, so that gives me peace of mind that I can use it confidently and know that my data is going to be secure, and, and you should feel that way too. Tom has a question. Uh, so the question for the recording is, what happens when progress removes a cipher? Do you lose access to the data? I'm going to go ahead and say no on that. <laughs> um, I, I believe what that would mean is that you're no longer able to create new policies under that cipher. So when you're specifying the ePolicy encrypt command, you won't be able to create that policy simply won't be, that cipher won't be in the cipher list. You won't be able to create new ones. That said, I haven't tested that, so I, I don't know, but I can't imagine progress just saying, nope, no more data for you. <laughs> Good question, though. I didn't think of that. Um, yeah, so then. Uh, the question is, does, does encryption change the size of your records? A block is still a block. Right? If you have a, an 8K database, every block is 8192 bytes. So when you encrypt a block, let's say it's a record block in a table, the entire data payload of the block, that is everything below the block header, gets encrypted. So there's no longer any structure in that data. So if you were to look at an unencrypted block, there's structure there. So you've got a block header, an RM header, a row directory, empty space, then record fragments, and those record fragments have a structure to them as well. They've got metadata and field values and field lengths and so on. None of that structure is visible because the data is encrypted. Right? That's it removes any patterns in your data. That's what encryption is essentially. But it's it's not like one record's worth of one block's worth of record fragments is going to get stretched out into two blocks and then push things over. And, and all yeah, the DB keys right. remain the same. All the row IDs remain the same. So it's not logically transforming the data in any way. And it's not physically changing the size so that it creates an issue like this. It's not physically changing the size of the data. So it's it's one for one in that sense. Although when we use let's say dash com with pro backup, right, that's right now that's a run length encoding algorithm. So it squashes any empty space, whether it's in empty blocks or in record blocks because they have some free space in them or index blocks. When you have an encrypted block, it's all just pseudo-random noise, right? There is no pattern. There is no big contiguous chunk of, of empty bytes. So well-encrypted data is, you know, theoretically uncompressible. So you're probably going to see that impact operationally in, in terms of uh, your backups being larger than they were uh, before you encrypted. But... I can't really give you a percentage on how much that is because, again, it, it depends so much on the implementation details, how many policies you have, how much data you have, how you've structured your areas, and so forth. 